What's up, y'all? I'm Chanel with Lizzie's Charm, and we are about to get into your December reading, okay? Um, I am a psychic intuitive, a root worker, and a spiritual support guide here just to help you through your journey in whatever way it is that you are needing um, in a spiritual way, right? Uh, tapping into the other side of things. So if you are interested or in need of any services that I offer, you can go ahead and check out in the description box below, okay? And you will see the link uh, to the website and you can, you know, touch everything there. So I'm looking down because this light in my glasses I want y'all to be able to see my eyes and if I look up, if I'm over here, it's just like, all right. So I'm doing my best, but I hope y'all feeling good, okay? We are going to get into this December energy, um, all right? the We started the month off with the moon in Pisces. So with that, that is just a very intuitive space for us to be in. Um, a very because <clears throat> um, Pisces is a lot about the collective consciousness, right? The the celestial realm, the cosmic things, the cosmic mystery of things, you know. So this is also a lot about you know unconditional love and um, recognizing where it is that we sac sacrifice in ourselves. Um, the ruler of Sagittarius, which is the sign that we're starting this month in, Jupiter is the original ruler, traditional ruler, ancient ruler, however you want to call it, of Pisces, okay, before Neptune came about. So basically, this is us really being at home with ourselves, with our, with our intuitive, creative genius type abilities right through this month that's really how I'm seeing this because the I feel that the moon always gives us a good pinpoint of how it is that we are going to be moving through the rest of the month you know and because Capricorn season um, happens on the I believe the 20th the 22nd I'm not sure I'm gonna briefly speak about those things in a moment but um on the 21st so it's basically us moving forward us building us you know creating because the moon is in a waxing gibbous phase so this is go big this is be big this is um we not full yet but almost there kind of thing so we are going to get into these psychic intuitive messages to see uh, what it is that spirit, our ancestors, our guides, you know, our God, Most High, Allah, however you name it, um, Yahweh, I don't know, you know, whatever name you call it, the all that is, okay, <laughs> we will see what messages it is that they have for us for this month, so um, I'm going to do this by element. Like, I, like the other readings have been, okay? And um, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle out all the cards. Um, we gonna do a collective and we are gonna go fire, air, earth, and water. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Whew. And after I pray, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the astrological placements that we'll be coming upon during this time. So, for spirit, ancestors, fair guides, those who are collective of the elements who are watching this video at this time, I ask that you come through and provide them with the message of it is that they need at this time. What do they need to know right now? What is it that it's going to start off for this month of December. Where are they headed? What do they need to know? What is the advice? What <clears throat> challenges, blockages, understandings do they need to have going forward? What is hidden? What is unseen? What is in the way? Thank you for 
your presence in our lives, showing up in your protection, in your coverage, in your guidance. We thank you, Ashe. Okay, so in December, um, Neptune is going to Station Direct on the 3rd. So that'll be on Saturday. And Neptune has been in Pisces in retrograde for, uh, I think, about five or six months. Um, don't quote me. But you could definitely go look it up. Or you can go check out um, House of Chiron's astrology video. I'll be sharing a video, uh, an astrology video of hers for the month of December. Okay, so... Um, but on her page, you can, from there, you'll be able to get access to her page and you can go find all these things out in more detail. Okay, so um, on the 6th, Mercury will be going into Capricorn. So we'll be going from a, a very <clears throat> traveling mind, right? A mind on the bigger picture to one that is more focused on the... The goal right the achievement the making it happen what is it what what mindset is needed needed in order for that to be a theme okay how is it that we are going to get there in a sense what's the foundation right what understanding is it that's needing to be held in order to make a thing real right because once you're on that journey in Sagittarius um, of figuring things out, then you begin to be like, hey, all right, this is what, these are my building blocks. This is what I need to do, you know? So then we have this full moon on the 7th, which is in six days, okay, um, in Gemini. And that is, I think that is going to be a really fun energy. For real. Um, it's just going to be... I feel good. It might be a little erratic because Gemini is it's very nervous system oriented. It's very mental energy, you know, but at the same time, um it's gonna be very awakening for some like like oh it makes sense kind of thing, you know. So then then is Capricorn on the eighth. What is that? The eighth on ninth of this month okay and with that that is basically giving us a very stable love language right this is like a, a commitment be beyond commitment <laughs> if that's even a thing like venus and capricorn is there for the long haul you know it's going to find a way to make things happen unless it's just uh, something impeding on its goals and not allowing um, love to happen in the way that is desired. So that it's wanting, right? That it's stable, that's stable, that's um, unbreakable, right? It's like a ruling in love, honestly. So on the 20th, Jupiter is going to move into Aries. That's going to be fun and quick, and it'll be there pretty much until oh you know what I'm not sure I don't know why y'all I am not sure okay so um outside of that the sun moves into Capricorn on the 21st so we'll be in a new zodiac season we'll be closing out the year not long after that we'll be having a a new moon on the 23rd Chiron been in retrograde is stationed in direct in Aries on the 23rd as well so wow that's gonna be some really powerful energy that's gonna be a square is it a square no it's a nine degree orb right so that's basically um it's definitely going to bring a sense of like clarity for us um we may be I'm hearing like attainment. We are attaining something if we've been working through the pain, working through the wounds, whatever that has been, right? Especially in, so in, in regards to our identity, right? And how we are 
feeling about a thing. So we're about to get into our retrograde season with Mercury and Mercury will be going in retrograde through the earth signs from here, um, from the 23rd, what is that? The 29th of um, December. And it'll be in earth signs for the rest of 2023. So that'll be giving us a lot of time to really reflect on our practical life, right? Really figuring it out, really getting down to the root of whatever to the matter, the root of the matter, right? So it's not going to be as turbulent. <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys, that is all the astrology and the cards are out. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, we have here, you know what, first I'm going to roll some dice. Let's see what the overall energy is giving for um, for December. I'm actually going to roll these for each element. And this is going to be for the collective. And you know what? Wow, I'm 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 up here talking, and I forgot a got cards for it, the water signs. So that's interesting. What is that? Water signs. We'll see what cards are coming out for you all because that's significant. <laughs> Oh, okay. Maybe y'all need to. I'm going to let those two be there. What else? This self-care. All right. So let's see what these sites got to say for the collective energy for December, for the month of December. So we have Uranus in Capricorn in the third house. All right. So that is, <laughs> that, <sighs> What was that deep? I don't know. So that is Uranus and Capricorn is like a radical change to um the Uranus and Capricorn is like a tower energy for me because Capricorn is a foundational energy and Uranus is like unexpected change, radical change, right? It's also about higher knowing, it's community, and um that must be outside. His community and and helping the other and humanitarianism and um you know the philanthropists so the, we okay so there may be a lot of communication uh conversations in reference to things of working together right to build something stronger to build something long lasting right and working out whatever it is that has that just hasn't been working this can be a familial thing okay and this is success in this right and it's going to be success coming in an unexpected way you know um it it could be a little turbulent trying to get there like but it's going to take um being clear clear in communication you know being very grounded in your communication and stable in that this can also be um uh unexpected changes in success in people with people who have small businesses okay um this can even be like uh, children may be receiving new siblings. You may be having new siblings. Like, I don't know. I don't know how old you are, if that's even a possibility for you. Okay. But um, basically, this is like having a higher understanding of how things work better when you work together. Right. So there may be a lot of group efforts that may be there may be something you had decided to do right with other people and in this it it's bringing something unexpected like wow I didn't expect this to happen like this you know kind of thing um this is also a change in perspective a change in perception um a change in the way in which it is that you allow your mind to go like the way in which you so what you think you know is about to change with some truth that you were not aware of, right? That um, it's bringing a lot of strong grounding energy, right? This is us all collectively, right? So this is something that's happening with 
we could say with the world, right? Because Uranus is far off foreign places as well. And, and Capricorn is this is like the, the succeeder, the success energy. These are both very, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. Capricorn is the 10th house, 11th house, 10th house, 10th house energies is like the world stage in a sense, you know, because it is bringing forth, um, this is uh, politics, right? That is we the people energy, okay? This is the rules and regulations. This is the, the, the government even, right? So it's a lot of communi radically, radical communication within changes of laws even, right? So some laws that have been really tight, maybe like dissipating, dissolving, like crumbling, things that we thought were going to be able to work or that they thought were going to be able to work for some time, it it's it's falling down in the sense that it's not working. There is no there was no movement being brought forth. So in order for movement to be brought forth, all right, there is some radical change that's needing to take place. There is some it's it's forcing a connection with God is forcing God to be brought into the picture. And I'm not talking about God utilizing the name of God in means of control. This is like, you know, this is being in connection with the oneness of the collective consciousness of all, right? That if this does not serve one, if this does not serve everyone, then there is no way that this can work for one portion, right? So what else? Let's go ahead and get into these cards. I'll keep going, going. And I don't, I, I don't know if it to be too, too long. All right. So let's see what cards the collective has. The moon and five of voices. Yeah. Okay. So the first card we have coming out here is the moon. All right. And with the moon, this may be something being, being exposed, right? This is um, some clarity taking place. This is, um, some illusion is being casted out by the truth because we have five of voices here. Five. This is the five of swords. Okay, so with that, with that coming out together, to me that is saying that there can possibly be some conflict uh, with in re reference to beliefs, right, and how uh, things should be going, which route it is to take. Right. But at the same time, it's like, OK, the illusions can no longer be cast. The truth is the only thing the the, the communication has to change. This is change in communication for real. And, and it's like. It's dissolving everything um, or anything. That was trying to be cast as something as the truth when in reality it is not it has not been okay so let's see oh wow wow yeah so with the moon we have the eight of cups all right so this is walking away from um like lies like betrayals walking away from things that are not authentic to us right so whether there has been any type of deception within ourselves that's been leaving like anything that is the not the truth is just totally not it, it don't it don't work here all right because with the five of voices we have the star card okay and that's gemini energy aquarius energy wow though that dice was like exact to what these cards are saying it's like um because the star card is Uranus, Aquarius energy. It's about the people. It's about wishes, fulfillments, hope. It's about, you know, uh, feeling good and um, healing, healing conflict, right? Healing, like, turbulence of the mind, right? This can be on a collective level of our own personal way of thought, what we believe, or if there have been any type of conflict in what it is that we needed as others, like, astrology might even be something that's coming forward excuse me in the forefront um 
it, there will be a lot of people really connecting with themselves, learning about themselves, right? Getting out of this space of feeling as if you don't know yourself or you don't know what you want or you don't know where you're going, right? That That is gone, right? There may be some relationships um, that have or will separate you know, out of the fact that it has not been based in something real, something true, something uh, tangible for real. It's like, it's been like airy fairy, very illusory. It hasn't been authentic to who it is that we truly are, right? And this can be friendships. This can be work relationships. This is giving strong work energy, right? So people might be like, fuck this job. <laughs> you know, I ain't doing this no more. Like, um, or perhaps there may even just be changes within your job that you are finding that suit you better out of the fact that uh, there may have been somebody higher up, right, that had been trying to um, cap off the budget, in a sense, for the benefit of their own bonus. My husband used to work for a company who... Had, he had a supervisor who used to be doing stuff like that. So that is totally possible. And if that place was still open, I'm sure she would still be working there. <laughs> but um, because she was a tyrant. Anyways, so tyrants are leaving out of the picture, right? So where we have been having um, problems with uh, people who it is that we work with, right? We are moving into this space of grace, right? Moving into a space of of clarity, of truth, of, of oneness, all right? Getting out of this conflicting ability to connect, to communicate, to feel what another person is going through, you know? Um, it may be a lot of psychic connection, a lot of telepathy, telepathy taking place, right? Um, long distance communication through that way, even through our dreams. Our dreams are gonna be very healing for us during this time. So what else is here? <laughs> and then we have the rising, right? So this is coming up out of, just coming up out of, right? This, for some, uh, what I'm getting is that some of us may be really connecting with our literal rising our ascendant signs within our astrology so um really connecting with the way that the world see us sees us because that's what the ascendant is that's what the rising is right really being willing to be seen in that operational space of being whatever that sign is you know so this is also coming up out of the dirt right rising above um the pettiness the pettiness, rising up, uh, rising above the falsehoods, okay, rising above the lies, the deception, and, you know, the light is being shown, like, it's a blooming, a blossoming of a multitude of things, this is a lot, I'm feeling a strong connection with the divine here, with this energy, what else is here, divine lineage, so this card speaks about I am my sister and my sister is me, right? So that's more collective energy, but this is also ancestral, right? So this is like our ancestors have been, in a sense, working together to help us get to this point, to help us free and liberate ourselves by some means, like um, as a collective, as a unit, right? So that we can be able to be and do because the star is about autonomy it's about freedom right it's about being able to be yourself right and the five of voices with the star granted some may be feeling conflicted conflicted with being oneself but more than anything um this is a coming out of this with this eight of cups energy, right? And it's like a healing that's taking place here, a really deep rooted healing, okay? Um, routines, habits, those things are changing as well. Thing that is serving us on in a way that is helping us rise, helping, right? So the morning time may be very important for us collectively as well. 
rising with the sun okay maybe um it's cold where I am so being near the beach may not necessarily be an ideal kind of thing all right but <clears throat> getting your water near a lake as well will be helpful um finding balance within oneself right and then we have I am safe this is cancer energy all right, so we are safe. There is no thing. What I'm also getting is a coming, a returning home to oneself. It's like a soul retrieval is taking place. Um, this is like a rising out of the darkness, a coming out of the shadows, taking off the blindfolds, seeing the truth for what it is, but also trusting what it is that one cannot see, right? And going forward and letting things be as they are and knowing that everything will work out as necessary as time goes by okay and it's a good time to clean tidy up this as the seasons change and all the those whatnot oh, sorry. i came in here asking me i didn't call him it made it seem like i needed something okay so um tidy up so maybe you want to give some things away maybe you want to go through some old mail and get rid of things maybe you need to throw out some old receipts okay maybe you're just needing to organize some paperwork get some things in alignment uh for where it is um that you are manifesting like and it's like making room for abundance to come into your life into literally into the home right this is like a working together karmic cycles are ending um organizing maybe you also need to clean out your phone okay um delete stuff old pictures old writings all right um perhaps you also are seeing that like you know how sometimes we have those spaces where we just throw in stuff like that might need to be tidied up and you might find something you weren't expecting there all right um something that triggers some sense of nostalgia within all right um what else yeah so that is it you guys for the collective all right so y'all let me know how y'all feeling those messages we are gonna go ahead and move on to the fire signs all right i'll see y'all in just a moment okay what's up fire signs so we're about to go ahead and get into your december reading so we're gonna roll some dice first see what messages it is that are coming out for you The moon in Aquarius in the third house. The third house in Aquarius is very popular. All right. This um this month of December. So fire signs. There is it's it's more of the same thing. It's like I'm getting a lot of working together in the home. Um this may be like support within the family okay um this can also be some changes you know radical unexpected changes within the family um within somebody maybe getting pregnant around you as well like an unexpected pregnancy um there could also be a need to detach um your way of thinking or perhaps even just changing your way of thinking like needing to establish um a head and heart balance in a different way okay this can there it's like a what i'm seeing is that your goals are being met okay wherever it is that you're moving forward towards okay um there could also be some distance between your siblings and you may just really be thinking about them really missing them all right there may even be some travel to your siblings there may be just some travel in general this is the holiday season we have christmas coming up we got new year right after that all right so maybe you're making plans to spend time with them all right, maybe there is some new work it is that you're doing with friends. Um, 
and it's bringing a lot of growth and movement in your life, this can also be a, a new understanding of yourself, of who it is that you are as well, and um, how it is that you've been going about communicating that in a different way, you know, coming from one space to another, right? So that it's like you're having a, a clear, very clear understanding of you, um, a clear understanding of your family, a clear understanding of what has influenced you, right? And how that has cultivated the way in which it is that you think right or what you think you know what you think what you believe to be the truth if that's the truth or not is it the truth I don't know you about to find out you know this is also you learning something right something of a, a on a quantum level right so quantum basically is everything existing at one time, right? So where there is sickness, health is already existing there. It's all in a matter of connecting with it. <clears throat> it's all in a matter of believing it, all in a matter of understanding it, right? So that may be taking place, um, maybe some quantum meditations, okay? Um, Two-point meditation, I don't know if you ever heard of that. If not, look it up, okay? This may be uh, you getting into astrology and astrology really helping you, really supporting you, all right, and thriving and moving forward, all right, um, feeling very nurtured by this as well, right, and this is like, uh, like a radical change within your heart space, um, also having a lot of fun in this month, um, and, and really just enjoying life, like everything seems really light, really effortless for you. And that that's the thing about, um, you know, I mentioned the quantum, that's the thing about it. It makes things easy. It is easy. Okay. It is the most easy. <laughs> I don't know if y'all ever got into that, but I will share some videos on just quantum healing very soon and hypnotherapy and all that. But for now, let's stay focused okay so um you may be having <clears throat> some very healing dreams right that's helping you catapult forward into your in in your waking life as well um there may be something new or there may be be careful when you're driving this month okay there could be some unexpected um I don't know, something unexpected when it comes to vehicles, right? Something unexpected when it comes to move, movement. But I do feel a lot of travel taking place to and with people that you love, right? And this could even just you being connected with your ancestors by some means. Aquarius is very ancestral for me. Um, I'm not sure why, but... When I do, I'll let y'all know. But uh, yes, may just be connecting with ancestors on the astral realm. All right. But the third house also is about immediate family. So it can be very strong in the ancestors, like a healing of, it's just, I'm really getting a strong awakening about who you are, right? You see yourself very differently this month. Like you're closing out the year, like, what was I thinking? It's okay. I needed to think, like, I needed to have been thinking that then. Okay, so let's see what cards came out for you guys. Wow, yeah, like I said, y'all gonna be having a lot of fun. So we have the three of emotions here. All right, and we have the sun card. So this is a lot of celebration, fire signs. Either you or somebody around you. This is, this is strong baby energy, like pregnancy energy. I don't know. So outside of that, this is like a feeling very joyful, feeling very at home, feeling very connected with those around you. Or lots of things to celebrate about, right? Having success and a lot of growth within yourself, within relationships as well, you know, with your children too, okay? Um, it's just like a blossoming, a blooming in your confidence and feeling very 
Okay, so it's triple goddess energy, but more so thinking like the triad, the mother, father, child within, right? It's like a judgment is happening. You've answered the call of something of yourself, of your heart, and it's moving you forward, right? And in what it is that you're wanting, right? What you're trying to create. The sun is about creation, okay? You are literally soul expressing yourself from a very uh, loving and gentle place. Like, it's not a force. It's not, it's not egoic. It's not, um, it's, it's not uh, manic or, you know, this is, it's really fluid, all right? It's really trusting in, there is a lot of giving here, you know, a lot of freedom as well in being yourself, being who it is that you are, okay? Okay. So this may be a month that you're wanting to get into the cycles of the moon and the cycles of the sun, all right? So if you are into any type of... Um, like conjuring or spell work <clears throat> using the cycles of the moon. And I'm not just talking about new moon, full moon kind of thing, like wax and gibbous moon, first quarter moon, last quarter moon, <clears throat> waning moon kind of thing, getting into that in the cycles of the moon, of the sun, the moon, the sun cycles within a day. So this helps things come quickly, helps understandings come quickly. Okay, so... Um, those are some things you may want to focus on to help you move forward within this, okay? Um, it's really some new beginnings taking place for you. Like, an old way of being is being washed away. It's being cleansed and, and really healed, like, from a very deep space within you. And this may be happening with other people. Like, even your relationships are being healed as well. There may be in your relationships, your love relationships, there may be like a lot of fun, a lot of celebration, and a lot of romance taking place, like, you know, just uh, having a good time, like loving on one another, maybe it's a lot of dates happening, you know, um, bottles popping, I don't know what you do, however you live your life, and it feels good for you, that's what's going on, okay, so let's see, what else is here, y'all, <laughs> so what's coming out with the three of emotions is the lovers all right so this is working together with others this is like i'm feeling you celebrating yourself as well you know wow um just really being able to did i say i said something about quantum healing right and in this particular deck the lover's card, it speaks about being at two places in one time. And that is a lot about quantum healing, being able to experience two facets of yourself in one space, right? Knowing that these two places exist, right? But allowing what is good, what is love, what is right for you to overcome anything else so that the information can come in and allow the healing to take place so that the growth can take place in ways that um, you really don't understand, right? So it's not necessarily about um, you knowing, <laughs> but allowing, right? So um this this full moon coming up in Gemini may be very pivotal for you fire signs, okay? And bringing, may just be having a lot of fun, a lot of connection, okay? Um, making, helping you make some decisions about your life and where you're going moving forward. And with the sun, we have the hermit clarifying this. Yeah, see that? Yeah, okay, the hermit. So with the hermit, this is, you know, you really reflecting, Okay, you you found your light. This is speaking that your light is truly coming from within. There is no falseness within this. Like there with y'all there, it's it's not happening. You know, it's like if um you have learned 
how to utilize your will in such an efficient way. I wouldn't be surprised if your manifestation capabilities um, come out in a way that just like shocks you, surprises you like, oh, wow, I didn't know I was capable of this. Right. And <clears throat> this is time spent healing. This is time spent choosing to love yourself. Right. And in coming to this space of trust of yourself, of knowing of yourself and recognizing and realizing that you are capable, you able to make it make it happen. Yeah. And we have resilience and with resilience coming out here, this is just speaking about you needing to be flexible <clears throat> because things are not going to take place in whatever way that you think you're, they're going to take place. But they are going to you are going to succeed in it right so it's like you got to trust the process um i don't want to be like oh you know you got to be strong kind of thing but more so of recognizing resilience is not about um breaking your back resilience is not about sacrifice resilience is about knowing that you have the ability to withstand whatever it is that comes about within your reality within your life within you Right, whatever emotions, whatever mental states that bring a lot of chaos within your life and your world, and you can get through that. You can um, move through that. Like it's nothing wrong with being resilient. And I'm saying that because I heard of it. I watched this video the other day because um, it's you know it's the whole soft era thing going on right now. I don't have nothing wrong with that. I spent uh, like six years of my life cultivating and reconnecting with my softness within and what I know is that what is becoming all right what's out here is becoming a trend which I I'm going off but let's okay when things become a trend know that they won't last and if they are a trend there's a lot of things that are false within them <clears throat> it's no true rooted way of being within it it's just a surface level way of grasping straws right so when i say that um in this video she was talking about you know she in her soft era and she she tired of having to be resilient but we need resilience you have to be choosing to be resilient is a form of softness right it is a form of a choice is feminine it is soft and choosing to be resilient and stand in what you are choosing right because that's how resilience really is it's choosing to stand this is not about breaking your back it's not about um strong arming or muscling up the strength to do something it's like it's ease this is what i'm doing Oh, I got to go here. Let me go here. Right. The wind is blowing me here. OK, I, I'm, I'm I got I'm good. I can go there with no conflict, with no chaos. All right. So what else is here? <laughs> and we have Oshun, a fearless love. All right. So there is a lot of abundance coming to you all this um this December. This may be uh needing to. Staying true to your ability to love, how you love, you know, what it is that, um, how you're going about um, trusting that it's okay to love in the way in which it is that you do, who you love even, okay, um, knowing that you are love, you are being loved, all right, and you are love, we are all love, right, so it's a lot about um success and loving oneself and seeing the light within you and the truth of who it is that you are all right and manifesting from this place right being very strong within and confident in knowing that beauty will lead you true it is okay for things to be beautiful it is necessary for things to be beautiful okay <laughs> And then we have, I keep, like this camera, y'all, it's new. Okay, we have I am sacred, all right? So know that what you want and what you say, it goes, right? You, you're you making your choices from a place of, um, that that's an untouchable kind of space, 
right? That is a magical type of space that is, um, I'm not doing this because it does not align to me kind of space, or I am doing this. I chose this because this is who I am. And just because you do not see that, does that, that does not mean it's not true. Maybe it's not true for you, right? So that in some reference, it is true because for you, it's not true for me, but for me, this is real, right? That, that thing. And self-care is read. All right, so maybe you're reading a good book that aligns with you. Maybe you just uh, getting in there with your shadows, okay, and working them out so that you can connect with that light within yourself, source within you, all right, connecting with the divine within you and really focusing on yourself, all right? Okay, fire signs, those are your messages. I hope that they serve you this December. Let me know how y'all feeling about that and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye for now. What's up, your signs? How are you? All right, so let's go ahead and roll these dice. See what messages that are coming out for you all at this time for the month of December. Okay, air signs. Y'all have some different energy here, which I like to see. I like when all the elements have different things going on. Okay, so Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. We have Jupiter and Taurus in the first house. So Jupiter and Taurus in the first house. This is basically an expansion of yourself, like growth. Um you may be very magnetic during December and receiving a lot of um, attention, okay? Um, you may be having a lot of opportunities come your way as well. Your looks may be changing in some way. Um, your health may be changing in some way, but in like a good way. You know, this is something that is like grounded and something very desired, all right. Um, it, who you are expressing yourself as may be coming off in a much more grounded way as well, like in a bigger way. You may be choosing to uh, be bigger, okay? <laughs> you know, and really just saying like, yes, this is what I'm going to do. All right. This is how I want my hair to look. This is the kind of clothes I want to wear. Okay. This can also be um about you really expanding on your beliefs about yourself even um really coming into like this very strong sense of self-worth and value in a way that you have yet to okay um it can be something new yeah so you also may be learning something new in reference to your personal self-worth, you could even be teaching something in, along the lines of worthiness of self or manifestation, perhaps, in when it comes to being oneself. Um, you may be tapping into that energy as well. There may be some new new beliefs it is that you're about to start working with when it comes to you um right your i am this i am this i am that i am beautiful i am healthy i am wealthy i am rich shit i am that bitch that is what that jupiter in taurus energy is in the first house um you know really just being it's a lot of it's like uh, ego energy but like good ego um but it may be subtle at the same time because although jupiter is big and exasperated um taurus is a subtle kind of present energy you know it's like you see me but i didn't have to say anything it's the same way in reference to the your ability to attract a thing right you may also be taking um you may be traveling 
All right. Um, some like individual kind of travels, something that's very healing for you, something um, that makes you feel grounded, something that is very valuable and something that you're investing in. Like it may be an investment of travel for you. You may be investing in something new, like home possessions, a new car or something like, I don't know, maybe you were investing in a private jet. <laughs> Oh, because that's what Jupiter, that's Jupiter and Aquarius energy for me. Um, and this can, but this can also be investing. Maybe you are planning some trips, right, for the future. Something during the springtime, something when the season is warmer, you know, and the sun is at its peak. Um, and this may be a solo trip. That doesn't necessarily mean, no, this is, you not doing this with anyone this is a solo kind of thing you may even decide like um I want to teach in this teaching that I want to do I want to do it by myself uh you may also be about to go back to school or go to school maybe you are just going to school right and doing something that you really love something that you really desire something that is truly true to you right it's like something that comes natural to you that's like an everyday it's almost a hobby for you you know but you are um in a sense making it your life you're making it all about you like it's yeah yeah There may be some things going on with your head, perhaps. Um, maybe it's like, and when I say your head, I mean like headaches or it, it could be like ascension symptoms, basically, you know, of the mind, the mind's expanding, you connecting with God for real in your body. And that's why it's feeling that way. You're connecting with your higher self, right? And it's a lot of information it is that's coming through you. All right. And it may, um, may be affecting you in a way that um, may make you think it's a need to be concerned. When in reality, it's not. It's just, it's a passing thing. Um If you decide to do like any type of healing work in your body, of the blood will be good. You might also want to strengthen your lower body, strengthening your legs. Maybe you want to do some glute exercises, all right? Your thighs, your calf muscles. It's like the lower part of your body is really needing strength at this time. Um, maybe you want to get into some running um, or some power walking. Maybe you want to do the stairs, Maybe if you got stairs in your house, maybe you want to run up and down those like five times, all right? Five times each way, though. <laughs> okay, so, you know, like a stairmaster kind of thing, but, you know, you can do it inside your home, all right? Um, because air signs, I see you getting real fine, all right? Being real, like, voluptuous, okay? So let's see what these cards saying for y'all. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's very interesting. Um, what was that for? Whatever the last reading it was, I did. Air signs had a lot of water energy and y'all have that again. The first card that's coming out is the four of emotions. So this is a lot about self-awareness. And it's interesting because... What is also coming out here is the six of emotions. All right. So that is about like inner reflection. There may be a lot of inner reflection taking place this this month in December for you. Both of these women, they are looking kind of sad in a sense. Um, one of them is holding her head and the other one, she's just kind of looking off in like a way, a way of longing. Like, so perhaps there's something that you're really desiring right but um 
what I'm seeing is emotional fulfillment taking place for you by way of um, seeing yourself for who it is that you are, right? Maybe there has been something that you have been, maybe in a, in a sense, what I'm getting is you've been sleeping on yourself, right? You have not been letting yourself be big, go big. And now you are. Right. There was some inner child healing that's needing to take place um, that's going to be processing for you through this time. All right. And this is going to bring you to like this, these relationships. It is that you want these. It's like you've been praying for this type of thing. Um, This is something that you've really been deeply wanting for some time now. Um, maybe there, there seems like there's some reconciliation taking place. It's like a lost. It, I, what I'm getting is that there was a relationship that you really enjoyed that meant a lot to you, and there it, it paused. It just it was gone. Um, and it's coming back for you, but it's only, that's only taking place out of the fact that uh, you chose to do the healing it was that was needed in order for uh, the connection to realign. Others, um, I'm getting that this is just something that's taking, happening within you, right? You're reconnecting with the spirit itself within, right? You are, um, feeling good about life again, having a reason to celebrate again, having a reason to love again. Yep. Yep. See? Okay, so we have... Come on, camera. This is the Queen of Coins, y'all, with the Four of Emotions. And so with the Queen of Coins, this is, you know, the Queen of Coins, she don't do a lot. So this month is not very, like, it's not very active. I was saying about like you just attracting things. Things are just coming to you. You know, you just being in this space and you like, I don't want that. So I'm not accepting that. I'm like, I'm not, not doing more. that does not work for me anymore. Right. Because the four of emotions is also that card, um, that comes after in the traditional tarot. Uh, I like to see it as um, the drunken stupor, the night after the hangover state, right? So it's like, I'm not doing it anymore. That's blocking my energy. That's blocking my ability to create, to receive, okay? For me to be rich, for me to be abundant. Like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not sitting there in this space of what was me like I'm not a victim right I don't have to drown out um who it is that I truly am or what it is that I want because I am capable I am able and I am worthy I am worthy maybe that's your affirmation air signs I am worthy and then what's coming out with the six of emotions is the princess of coins all right, so you're making a decision. You're finding some balance within your practical life, um, within your day-to-day -day, uh, goings-ons, right? Um, finding, um, having this really new understanding about yourself and starting out on this new path of what it is that, what it is going to take for you to come into the queen of coins energy, right? It's already within you. It's already here and you're, you're gaining the self-awareness of that. You're learning that. You see that. You are going within to connect with this and the healing of, you know, these old, old things, you know, like reconnecting with the sweetness, the innocence within you is really allowing you to have this new start with your life, right? Creating a new reality, for real, all right, um, connecting with all parts of yourself, not leaving anything out, not feeling like you got to hide, like, I don't have to hide how I feel, it's fine for me to be me, all right, let's see what else is here, y'all, 
This is the youth. <laughs> okay. It, it's really, y'all really connecting with y'all sense of uh inner innocence, inner innocence, internal innocence. Okay. This is what this is about. And it's about that active state. Maybe some of you guys are connecting with your children more. If you have a son, um, there may be some new things coming forward with him. Um, you know, but this can just be that masculine active principle of your inner child and you um, having fun with life, enjoying life, going big, right? Knowing that the wind is beneath your wings and it's possible you are capable and you are able, all right? And knowing that um, what you want, what you desire is accessible to you, right? And trusting the process, having this sense of um, internal youthfulness that is drawing, that is attracting to you what you need, like the your active state of um, youthfulness is possibly the trigger in your ability to be magnetic, right? To be in that queen of coins energy, okay? Because the queen of coins, she doesn't, she, she knows that she doesn't have to work hard for anything. Like everything is just going to come to her. She's a giver and a receiver on all levels. For me, the coins energy involves everything, all right? That's fire, air, and water, right? So her emotions are good. Her She connected to spirit. She connected to her truth and her mind is aligned. It's in alignment with her assignment, okay? So let's see what else is here. Yeah, we have the wounded healer here, Sekhmet. So Sekhmet, yeah, maybe I want to get in touch with Sekhmet. She's uh, all about protection, all right? But in this deck, she is about being the wounded healer. So with this, this is you no longer sacred. You are the, you cannot put yourself, you are putting yourself first. This is not put, it's, video keep dragging okay this is not about putting yourself last anymore right this doesn't mean that you can't be there for people how you have been but you can no longer um sacrifice yourself for the means of another for the health and well-being of another like you got to be on point you can you cannot give from an empty cup right and that has a lot to do with so Chiron is going into retrograde this month when we have the Capricorn new moon. So at the end of the month, um, things may be may start you moving very quickly for you. That's that youth card is very Aryan energy for me because you know Aries is the first fire sign and fire is masculine energy. Okay, so this is a healing of the identity that has taken place, right? First house energy. First house is also about innocence. This is like new life coming in. Okay, so, y'all. Y'all really wanting to, um, it's a very sensual time for you. So getting connected with your senses, um, and this is the your bodily senses and your other senses, all right? Your clear senses, your psychic senses, your intuitive senses, okay? And doing what it is that you need to do so that you can let the healing take place in the way that it truly needs to take place, all right? Because sometimes we get into a space of healing, right? And it be and we think we're going deep, but it be very surface. It be so surface. You know, and that that's nobody's fault, but right now the the that's that's the trend, right? Spirituality has become a trend, and if we get caught up in the trending of things, everything it becomes surface and distorted, right? So what I'm getting is that those distortions are clearing, are leaving. You are very much so getting in tune with something very ancient within yourself right? Something very hidden within yourself that is catapulting you to a very healed um, 
inner child kind of space. Maybe there's even some healing that you were wanting or needing to take place when it comes to your children. Blessings. This camera keep dragging y'all. I hope I wonder how it's going to look when it play back, but okay. Yeah, so the next card is I am curious. So again, this is this energy is so much about innocence for you because that is what curiosity is. It's like, you know, children be curious. Like, what's that? Can I touch that? That's hot. What it tastes like? Give me some. You know, very innocent. Innocent by nature. Okay. And being open and willing to um, see what is there. What do you not know? Are you willing to know what you don't know? Are you willing to understand that you don't know everything, right? Because if you did, um, you wouldn't be here. This is a school, this life here, <laughs> all right? If you knew, you wouldn't be here. So self-care for you is crystal work. So connect with crystals to help you. So when you're feeling certain ways and everything, um, Maybe you need to get you a crystal book, all right, and see what will help you with where it is that you are, right, with what you're feeling. Maybe you want to um, put your crystals out underneath the moon to cleanse them if you use those, if you already have some. Um, perhaps you are wanting to uh, build you a crystal grid. Grid, grid was powerful, all right? It's powerful. Okay, my ear signs, so... Those are your messages. I hope that they bless you. Let me this camera. Give me a second. Recording. Okay, yes. Let me know in the comments and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye for now. Hey there, my earth sign. So we are going to get into your December message. Hold on. Okay, it's not. So let's go ahead and get into your messages for December. Okay, so I'm using this new camera. We're going to see it keep doing something, all right? But we're going to see. Somebody probably tried to call me because it's connected to my phone. Either way, let's get into these messages. So you have the South Node in Aquarius in the 8th house. So with that, let me do something real quick. <laughs> okay, wow. Okay, so... I just uh, had to put my phone on do not disturb. And it's interesting because you got South Node and Aquarius in the eighth house. And the eighth house is about intimate relationships and connections. And Aquarius is about detachment. <clears throat> Aquarius is a relationship energy, but it's not the type of relationship energy where um, you're feeling responsible for another person, whereas the eighth house is that. In the south node is here. So maybe, maybe you are needing to let go. Maybe you have been very separated or distant in reference to your um, relationships because you may just be really good at having close bonds and being like, uh, you know, type of thing, just distant. Um, I'm going to use myself, for example, because I have a lot of planets in Capricorn. But uh, when it comes to my relationships, um, why did I say I had a big, why why was it important for me to say that I have a lot of planets in Capricorn? I don't know. Either way, oh, no, what I meant to say is my seventh house is in Aquarius, right? So with that, like, when I'm with the people who I love, like, Yes, that is everything. But if I'm not around somebody, like I'm not thinking about them. You know, I'm not 
wondering about them unless like I get some type of nudge in reference to them or if someone brings them up then I'm thinking about them um or I'm wondering how they're doing kind of thing but outside of that like I don't be thinking about people <laughs> it's like an out of sight out of mind thing it's very much so that for me and that is Aquarius in the eighth house you know and with the south node there um it's a lot of but it's more even more so in like an intimate way so this can be you living with someone right and showing up like that this could be you um being in the space of um you know having this intimacy but just being very detached and with south node here this is like okay it's time to let that type of operation go like it's more of a hindrance. Like there is something good within that. It's good that you can um, not be codependent, right? But at the same time, um, for this to be coming up, it must not be helping you in some sense. Yeah, because what's facing me is the moon in Libra in the seventh house. <laughs> so it's like spirit is saying, you need to be more of a partner. You need to be more, have more of a partnership here that may be needing some more romance, some more closeness, some more, um, you know, because the opposite of Aquarius is Leo and Leo loves to be loved upon, you know, all the time. Like you can be in a Leo's face all the time and they kind of be okay with that until they just, you know, need some time to themselves, but they will come back to you and be in your face and be around you and all those things but with the south node <clears throat> here in Aquarius is saying like yes you are really great at not feeling the need to depend on another person but um when it comes to eighth house it's very union energy right because you share stuff here this is other people's money this is shared resources right this is the people who you have children with okay this is like banks and institutions and um people loans but this is also about debts right so you are probably needing to pay a lot more attention to your debts this month and clearing those things up bringing light to that because Aquarius can is the type of energy to like just look over all that kind of stuff granted I'm not saying that Aquarius are not responsible I'm not saying that at all um what I am saying is that it's easy to bypass that energy right so there may be some loans that are needing to be taking place um that are needing to be paid back right this can um even be speaking about something of the past coming up in reference to intimate relationships, even um, some type of communication. This may have something to do with old intimate friendships, right? And that that coming back up and trying to like either rectify itself. Maybe there's some healing that's trying to take place. Maybe there's some heart convert based conversations that's taking place here towards Virgo Capricorn. Okay. Um, it can be some endings. This is a big ending energy. South node, eighth house. Okay. Um, it's like forgiveness in a sense. Maybe what I'm getting is like some some stepping out kind of energy. Um, even like some type of betrayal, a hidden enemy type of thing took place. And like maybe some clarity is, is happening here um and letting the past go by letting bygones be bygones okay um but there is some really deep healing taking place it's like some transformation that is taking place within your goals like whatever it is that you thought you were gonna do um for the long run a long term kind of thing that may be changing like your old plans may be being thrown out in a sense or they just may be um changing for the better like they may you may be connecting with them from a higher perspective right you may through having connected with yourself it's more ancestor energy here um so there may be some ancestors trying to communicate with you as well, especially on the astral realm. 
it's a lot of Aquarius energy during this December. Like a lot of it's a lot of a lot about autonomy and being oneself. Like so, you know how to be yourself within a a relationship with anyone, right? And that's a great thing. Um, but something's coming in trying to teach you how to go with the flow and be a union, be in closeness, uh, be in connection, be in oneness within your union, um, be in a God reflection within your intimate relationships, right? Because anytime we connect, this is an opinion for me, anytime we connect with someone, it's a, a reflection of God, right? We are seeing God sure we are seeing a reflection of ourselves but in that that is seeing God too right because we are made in the image of okay so this may also have to do about um you learning to see another person as, as in the perfection it is that they are and there may be something in reference to judgment that's needing to be let go here all right um because this is all fixed energy so you may for a long time may have only been seeing things in one way having this perspective that it was outdated for real a perspective that does not that didn't serve that has not been one to uh bring any growth any movement okay and in a sense, it may have been blocking your manifestations, been blocking your ability to be able to, um, uh, I don't want to necessarily say attract, but just shit, create for real. To have a good time, to enjoy what it is that you have. All right, but if you've been holding on to too many thoughts, too many perceptions of a way in which something should be, should go, you don't, nothing has to be any kind of way, right? Outside of however a person wants it to be, right? But this has a lot to do with other people involved. This is not just a you energy. So let's see what these cards are saying here. Ain't that some? <laughs> All right, so we got the death card. So like I said, the death card is eighth house energy. Um, transformations taking place, you know, um, a rebirth is happening and it's happening within your emotions, right? You may have been very disconnected. This is a five of emotions, all right? There may have been some disappointments, some hurt, some pain, but that is changing um, by some means. Like this Capricorn new moon may be a good moon to work under for you. Um, because there's something in that it's some something in reference to your shadows um that has been a block when it comes to the change taking place within your world. This is a lot about your magnetism. This is about your attractiveness. I said I didn't want to say that, but here we are, okay. um this is about you being able to feel right but feeling what's really real and not feeling something based off of some old perception some old outdated beliefs like it's like maybe something happened within your intimate relationships that like really weighed you down like it it you lost all hope in uh being able to have what you want you know connect how you want uh love how you want but what I'm also getting is there is going to be a transformation taking place. A, it's like a big change is happening here. Like your intuition, you're coming online. It feels like within your intuition in a way that you haven't. Like because it's something that's blooming, that's blossoming. Um, you are coming out of this cocoon that you have been in. All right. Um, please beware of the false light. That's been coming up a lot too through all these readings, like the the trends and all that, like stay away from the false light. And that perhaps may have the false light may have been the reason why you have been having the issues in reference to um 
the relationship things, right? I don't, I don't know what you've been learning, what you've been taking in. Um, and this, granted, this could just have been the false light within you, right? Maybe you are coming from this space. Maybe you, maybe you have been trying to manipulate something in a way to go your way, and it didn't. So it brought you to this space of um, heartbreak, heartache, in a sense. And, but that's changing. Like there's some healing taking place with that. What else is here? Yeah. Wow. All right. So the transformation is taking place here. We have the Queen of Cups. All right. So you are really coming into this intuitive center. All right, really connecting um, with your divine feminine energy um, for the women here. Definitely uh, connect with your moon cycles. There's something in that for you because death in itself is a cycle. A cycle in this particular card is a cycle of a rebirth, right? So in the five of emotions is being clarified by, again, the death card so we have the death card happening here twice all right so there is something big ending um there may be something ending that uh is something ending within you or something ending within your relationships that uh may be very heartbreaking in a sense for you um, something that you thought was going to last, you may see that it may not necessarily be able to work out in the way in which it is that you want it to. On the other hand, what I'm seeing is that there's something that's being raised from the dead, literally. Um, there's like some new life. It's a rebirth taking place, right? There's some transformation. You, It's like you've learned the law when it comes to your fate right so um recognizing that your fate is totally controllable that you have the ability to make fate into what you want it to be based off of how you respond to the things that take place in your life right um because everything is a ripple effect so this is a transformation from so it's like the the death card was clarified the queen of cups saying that you're transforming into your rebirthing into this queen of cups and the five of emotions is the death that's happening right it's the change that's happening the change of emotions this change of state of feeling the change in your connection or lack thereof to your intuition right to your heart space it's a lot of heart healing taking place here what else is here for my earth signs that's interesting so we have hail here coming out for you guys all right so for me that is speaking about growth maybe you have been feeling like you have been in this emotional state of hell right and it just it, it just seemed like it was one thing after another thing after another thing and it's just like when is this gonna end when is it gonna end is it ever gonna be over right but it's ending it's taking place and you're realizing this based off of the fact that you see that you can't be disconnected from your relationships in the way that you thought you could it's not going to allow you to have in some way it's not healthy I think I said that at the beginning it's not healthy but there's a growth taking place growth from out of this darkness there's a deep sense of growth happening within you when it comes to your shadow because that's what all this is is some shadow shit that's been going on that you I don't know maybe in the background thought was an okay thing to be operating in but in reality like nah you cold you're a cold motherfucker like that is giving that kind of vibe and it's just like has hell been hot enough for you right you so cold you've been sitting here letting this operate in in mold in your life in just in troublesome situation that's a troublesome situation at the and it's been an emotional thing it's been internal like you probably haven't even been talking to anyone about this and if you have been talking to anyone about this they may have been commiserating with you check that 
All right. What else is here? Sacred lust. Yeah, definitely about relationships. It feels good to feel good. So you're learning that it is the connection that feels good, right? That it is safe for you to want what you want, to be pleased how you want to be pleased, to feel how you want to feel, okay? Um, and you may be coming out of, maybe you have been really into your feminine energy, right? And, need, and, and now connecting, finding some balance between the feminine and the masculine because... <laughs> These are the only two masculine, this is the only two masculine energies here, these two men, her two men, okay? Because everything else here is feminine. Even hell is feminine, it's the darkness, all right? Persephone is the, the, the goddess of the underworld, right? So in spring does not bloom until she comes back up. So those are things to think about. What is the personal power here? Right. You have, I am responsible for my life. So you're crowning yourself. You are recognizing and seeing that you are in control of how things go, how things flow. Right. So if you have been in this space of, it seems like you've been trying to control things in a very unhealthy way. And that, may have um you know there may have been some secrets here there may have been um a lot of mind games here right trying to utilize <laughs> it's like in the sense you're trying to utilize your wits to make something happen and it backfired or something that's for somebody i don't know who but um and this could be someone who was juggling two men or, you know, having many lovers kind of thing. And that did not pan out for you. It just seemed to bring more and more bullshit your way, you know, but you're seeing, you're learning. I'm responsible for my life. I can, I don't, it doesn't have to be like this. Like I, I'm manifesting this from this place of these old disappointments, right? Because I mean, it's nothing wrong with having multiple lovers, but if you're trying to do that in a way that um, is from an old space of being, like especially from where you were wounded, then it's going to create more hell. It's going to just bring hellish situations. On the flip side of things, for those who are not experiencing that or anything of that way, it's like you were trying to use your wits in order, you're trying to use your mind to deal with an emotional situation to deal with a relationship um maybe a hurt in a relationship and um it just kept attracting more and more relationships to you that were not healthy right and you're seeing like damn i did this i am responsible for my life i can take control of this i can stop trying to control things i can stop trying to mentally fix things um and either suppressing my emotions, right? My hurt feelings or um, utilizing my, my emotions to manipulate. Okay, so what's the self-care here? Nature. So we'll sit you out, go, go sit by some water. Go journal while you out in the grass. All right, it's cold where I am, so. I don't know where all y'all watching this from, but <clears throat> on the days when it's nice and the sun is out, or perhaps you like the cool air, however it may be, go outside and get you some fresh air, some nature, some sun, when the sun is out, okay? That's very interesting, earth signs. I didn't expect that, but you know, I mean, I know what this is for me. You know, just some old stuff that hadn't been dealt with, okay? But all right, my graceful earth signs, those are your messages. I hope that they serve you in this month. Know that there is some very, very deep transformation taking place for you, okay? 
Um, if there's anything that you are in control of, it's yourself and your life. Okay. So I'll talk to y'all soon. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments. All right. Bye for now. What's up, water sign? So we finally here with you guys for this December energy. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm rolling the dice for you. See what's going on with you for this December. For my water signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. So we have Saturn and Cancer in the 11th house. So... Ooh. So there may be some new or not new. You may be feeling very committed, very um, devoted to your cause, right? Um, you may be finding a lot of discipline within what it is that uh, in attaining your goals, right? So following your heart, but in a very structured manner. Um, this can also uh be a listening to your intuition your intuition may even be feeling a little blocked like maybe you're hesitating on doing something um this is like feminine friendship energy as well so maybe there are some blockages that you're working through with your connections with women um this may be doing some work with women literally like in a group setting um and, and bonding and you know really getting down to the dirt of the matter the foundation the root of the matter all right um really feeling like you can express yourself genuinely authentically like it, yeah i want to say you feel safe to be vulnerable but at the same time it feels hesitant like uh i don't know if i should i don't know you know um but there may be some work, you may be doing some work on your vulnerability, uh, especially when it comes to expressing yourself and what it is that you want for your life. Like you're meeting your goals, like gaining what it is that you desire, your freedom, you know, your own inner nature, um, your autonomy. Maybe you feel in blocked in your relationships with women in being autonomous, being yourself by some means. And maybe you're doing the work to move through that, to work through that. There's some healing taking place with that. Um, Saturn in Cancer is, you know, very emotional, but not like, you may be a little stoic in reference in, in when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to the groups and organizations that you're in. You may be putting work before connection, in a sense. Um, or you may be just really committed to being emotional with people, with, uh, how you put yourself out there with, maybe you are feeling very heartfelt in helping others, um, accomplish their goals, right? Or maybe there's someone coming through for you with that, in that space. All right, there may also be some really radical positive changes in your relationships with women, um, right? That's encouraging, and it's whatever work it is that you're doing within yourself uh, is successful, that's for sure, definitely successful. Um, you may be working towards feeling more secure within yourself as well. There may be some things coming up with your mother or your family, the women in your family. Um, you may be learning something about them. You may be uh, seeing yourself in them in some way and how that has blocked or restricted you from connecting. You know, maybe you, in a sense, maybe this is about, it's a lot about your independence, your sovereignty, your autonomy, um, and learning how to feel safe within that. Let's see. You know, making some decisions okay so the first card that's coming out is the two of voices so there is something that you are deciding on yeah so it's not the 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 emotional energy is like blocked in the sense or maybe you just don't want to utilize that like 
just being very stoic because we have the two voices and the queen of voices. So this is both swords, right? So there, and she is looking at the two of voices. So you are definitely making a decision about something, something when it comes to what it is that you want to do, right? Especially when it comes to like your success, your, um, your stability within your life for real. And it's like, what, what are you going to choose? What are you going to do? And you may need to bring your emotions into this, bring some heart into this so that the peace can be found, right? You may, I don't want to, you definitely, the queen of voices is not forcing um, a choice. She's just going to choose what it is that she has to choose right what what is fair what is unbiased this is a, a decision that's being made that um and maybe that's why you can't be emotional within this because um this is a fair judgment this is not um a comparison right this is not um it's a fair choice you know it's not um I'm choosing this because it's like I'm I'm doing I'm choosing this because this is right. This is what works. This is what is needed. You know, um you may even be making a decision about a relationship. Okay, um and this may this seem it feels a lot to do with work. And how are you going to go about that? Maybe it has something to do with who you choosing to work with. You know, and if you want to still work with these people or if you want to um, take this opportunity because it feels a lot like uh, it, it kind of feels like you feel trapped within your ability to be yourself by some means. And perhaps how it is that you have been going about things haven't been working in the way that you want to. And it may be because you have been in the wrong element of how you've been trying to go about it because the Saturn and Cancer is not really, um, I don't want to say it's not prosperous, right? Because it they both represent stability. Saturn is the opposite of Cancer, right? So this is kind of like bringing the vulnerability with the foundation, okay? So... <clears throat> It's a lot about figuring out where you're going, right? Where you're going, where you want to go, how you want to go about doing that, who you want to go about doing that with. What else is here? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot to do with women here with you. Um, It's a lot to do with women. So it, we have the moon card here with two of voices. So there may have there there's something that's some clarity that's coming about like the the illusion is is coming the mask is coming off the veil is being lifted right because it's almost like you got the world in your hand and you don't you it's like you got the world in your hand and you don't know where you want to land you don't know where you want to um uh, laying your plane okay and um but this for you is about working together with others okay so what may be getting in the way it feels like that there may have been some relationships that disappointed you in the past and it has you in this like this conflicting energy when it comes to what it is that you want to do, right? But something's being illuminated for you. The truth is being revealed. And in that truth being revealed, you uh, you do come to a final decision. And the nine of wands is uh, clarifying the queen of voices. So this is you finding success. It's, it's success, but you are... Um, it's success because you understand how things have to work from here on out, right? Especially when it has to do with work. It's like, maybe at one time, and I mean, I get a water sign. It's, I get the wanting to be emotional, wanting to do stuff with people that you love. And that just not being a thing that actually works sometimes because people be judging. People be when... um 
when people know you, they start to hang stuff over your head, right? It's like, uh, what, almost like, what's that word? I can't think of it right now. But it's almost like you're making a decision to uh, work with others, possibly, but in a protective kind of way right protecting yourself you're taking you you're taking your time you're seeing through everything you making sure that you're connecting um and trusting your intuition and trusting your foresight all right but it's, it is successful right with what it is that you want what you desire interesting so we got sleep here so like i said something's being illuminated um Something's being illuminated. There may be something in the home that you're coming, uh, that some of you are are, un, are are gaining clarity on. Maybe something with moving, you know, you've been trying to move or perhaps, perhaps there is... <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay, so maybe there's someone that you have been connecting with, right, that you know, that you love or something that you thought was on a different level, and you are realizing that that's not the case, right? That wasn't the case, and you kind of let your heart, and you maybe you wanted, you worked with them, and it got in the way, all right? Um, but it seems like this you need some rest. December is a time of rest for you because the two of voices is like, you need to pause for a second. Then the moon comes out. It's like skirt break. Mm -mm, nope. And nine of wands is a pause as well. Right. So. Mm, uh, ooh, so many words, so many words won't say it, won't come out. It's like you you're seeing that uh, continuing to go forward in the way that you've been going forward is not going to get you, not going to move you. It's not going to manifest in the way that you want to manifest. Um, are you writing down your dreams? Do you have a dream journal? It's good to have dreams and know them at that time and everything. But if you keep a dream journal, you can go back to that weeks later and when all the dreams have stacked up and you're reading it, it's going to show you a pattern. That's important. So maybe you need to see what the pattern is here. Maybe you need to pause so you can recognize what the pattern is here. Okay. But this feels a lot to do with, with, with connections, right? Like, why does this keep happening? And it's something that you have been sleep on something that you haven't been clear about but at the same time it feels like you have kind of been overworking yourself um there is like no rest in the jungle is what I'm hearing it's just like what we are not in the jungle take a nap sleep eight hours like what you doing <laughs> do you think that the people not gonna be there when you get up, okay, granted, I get it. Some of us has, have real jobs to go to and we are on a schedule, right? I get that. But it's like, maybe you too focused. Maybe, maybe there's some type of escapism that's going on. Maybe, you, maybe you're scrolling a lot. Maybe you're watching a lot. Maybe, um, maybe it's some type of addiction, right that you are needing to let go of that is interrupting your sleep right maybe there is a lot maybe you're just really in your head some but whatever it is you are becoming awakened to something something is becoming very very clear for you and it's going to trigger you into doing some self-healing some self-work right because Lilith is in cancer right now so this definitely, Lilith is like dark feminine energy, all right? <clears throat> and with it being in Cancer, this is like toxic feminine, right? So maybe there's some, maybe you have been connecting in a dark feminine kind of way, right? And that that involves like um, cunningness and manipulation and, and being sly and um, 
seductive, but in a way to get your way kind of thing, right? Those are just a few things. I mean, maybe you want to look into the dark feminine energy and see how that resonates with you. Maybe you want to look into Lilith. Where's Lilith in your chart um, natally? Okay, where do you have cancer in your chart and where's this taking place for you? Let's see what else is here. Yeah, wow. Something's going on. So we have Jumbi, Mass, and Atete, Worthiness. All right, so again, like, um, you matter. All right, you matter. And it's safe for you to be seen. It's safe for you to be able to connect with people who see you, who want to see you, um, you know, or maybe there's someone around you who is wearing a mask. I don't know. This feels like some relationship energy, work energy. Maybe you haven't been being yourself. Either way, it's time to take off this mask. It's time to take off the mask. It's time to stop dealing with people who wear masks, okay? Because if you are not being true to yourself, if you are not fully, your mask could simply be you not connecting with what it is that you really feel. What do you really feel? What do you really want? All right, because worthiness has a lot to do with desire. Okay. It has a lot to do with your needs as well and your values and your investments. Okay, so are you doing what it is that you really want to do? Why are you doing what you do? Are you, is it really valuable to you? Is it really worth your time? Maybe it's, it's and that's the decision it is that you're trying to make. Granted, you're going to make the decision. All right, but you're going to have to wake up first. You're going to, one, have to wake up and then you need to get some sleep because it feels like you're overworked as well. Like my entire back started hurting. I was fine these past four pounds that I've been pulling and all of a sudden my back hurts all right so um maybe you need a more comfortable chair maybe you are stressed out maybe the people you got to talk to every day get on your nerves and you think you gotta do what you're doing maybe you feel like you gotta work the system all right manipulate the system in order to get what you want maybe you feel like you gotta do something that is not you in order to get what you want. Granted, it's great to expand. It's great to grow. But is that really valuable and worth your time on? And know that if you're doing something that is not you, it's going to stop you from really uh, attaining what it is that you want because it's going to um, decrease your magnetism, your natural flow. What else is here? Personal power. Yeah, it's some change that has to happen. I embrace change. That's why my back hurts. Do you see she got this scale on her back? That is the places that my back was hurting from up here to like my mid back. All right. And that is, um, and it's interesting because the moon card here is, it represents the back of the head. So maybe you want to do some mirror work and it feels like, um, Maybe you have something attached to you and it's weighing you down in a sense. It's like draining your energy, water signs. What's going on here? This has something to do with your mother <laughs> or maybe the women in your family and you are wearing a mask because you don't feel like you matter, but you got to make a decision. Maybe you're going back and forth about this. But you just got to take a break. You really got to take a break. You just need, can you just stop everything? Can you just stop? Is that possible? Can you stop your mind? Can you stop thinking? Can you stop judging? Um, can you stop seeing things through um, 
rose colored glasses and sometimes rose colored glasses don't have anything to do with um being delusional right it can be you seeing things in a way that they completely not and not in a oh I love this but more in a kind of way right so it's like where are you with it where's your where's your sight what is your eye set on are you connected have you been connecting the patterns the puzzle we got puzzle here did I say something about trying to figure something out a puzzle a pattern the pattern I said something about a pattern it's a cycle it's definitely a cycle taking place here Maybe I think I told Pyle mm, what Pyle was that? Because you may need to go watch that video. Ooh. Oh, was the fire signs. I had said working with the moon and Oh, earth signs, working with your cycle, right? Connecting with your womb space, right? There may be some womb healing that take, needs to take place. So when I talk about womb healing, I'm not talking about like drinking green juices and dandelion tea. I'm talking about like some ancestral womb healing. What's the pattern here? Where Where's this existing within you? Who is this reflecting? It's mirror. Who is this reflecting? What is this subconsciously? Where, what in your subconscious is manifesting here, right? You're embracing change. It's going to change, but you, it's like, you have to be willing to do the work. It's like, whatever this is for you, if you don't do what needs to be done, it's just going to stay the same. And staying the same can either be it's whatever you make it, right? It's whatever you write it as. It's it's not good. It's not bad. It's not anything. It just it's whatever you make it, you know. So if you want something different, you'll embrace change. You'll get out of the pattern, right? Maybe you want to do some puzzles for real. Like sit down and do you a five hundred piece puzzle. Put that together for the month of December, and see what you have learned at the end of that. All right, how you feeling? Why is my lip peeling? Whew, that's bothered me this whole video. All right, maybe you are worried about the wrong thing. Maybe you are worried about appearances. Maybe you are worried about being vulnerable. Okay, maybe you're worried about being seen as you are. What is it? Okay, are you willing to let that old skin die? What's happening here? water signs y'all been having some interesting readings but i gotta go all right i love you guys i hope that these messages bless you all right and yeah if so let me know in the comments and i'll talk to y'all real soon bye